Take one important community resource in desperate need of repair. Add a group of unemployed youngsters and school leavers. Give them the support of businesses and training organisations and they might just be able to save their youth centre and set off on the path to a new career. This is one of South London's most important community buildings. The Streatham Youth Centre, which recently celebrated its 50th anniversary, is a hub for young people enjoying sports, social and creative activities. Its future, however, is under threat. Major works are required to return the building to its former glory, but a serious lack of funding is stopping all that from happening. However, South London plumbing entrepreneur Charlie Mullins has found a way to save the building while continuing his mission to help young people earn the skills in trade that will help them secure employment. Volunteer It Yourself is a collaboration between Charlie's company, Pimlico Plumbers, the co-sponsorship agency, Wix, London Youth and training organisation A4E. This project is designed to save the youth centre and give the young people skills to hopefully set them on a path to jobs. So here we are um, at the beginning of this uh, amazing project, the VIY project. Um, this is uh, going to be done at our uh, centre here in Streatham, Streatham Youth and Community Trust. And um, we're going to have um, basically the, the building transformed uh, from uh, what, it's, what it has been currently from, uh, from its over its 50 years history, um, obviously a lot of a lot of things are going on. Um, our young people have, uh, are extremely excited about the prospect of, of what's uh, coming coming to them and uh, what the what the building is going to look like at the end of it all. Um, we um, we're delighted to have uh, all sorts of people involved uh, from well, Pimlico Plumbers. First of all, they're doing a hopefully they're going to do a marvellous job. Um, got Wix on board supplying the uh, materials. Um, uh, London Youth, our uh, support agency, um, they've uh, asked us to be involved in it from, a, from our point of view, the building point of view. Uh, the co-sponsorship agency uh, have also been involved in pulling all the partners together and also um, v, uh, the V project um, and also A4E uh, who are involved in and from us, from our point of view, from, from purely uh, a funding point of view, um, the work that uh, will be going on uh, certainly could take years to, to get done, um, uh, given the, the sorts of funding constraints there are um, upon many organisations at the moment. So uh, everybody involved, uh, it's, uh, it's going to be an amazing project. <laughs> Okay, what, you can do, what we're doing here, as you can see, is the boys are prepping it up. They're peeling the tape off. Under them tape is likely to be split. Uh, reason being, they're only sort of fly ball underneath. There's a lot of movement. There's ball games in here. If a ball goes up, it's that, then it, everything moves around. So we're using flexible filler so that basically it'll move with the balls. Then the idea is we're going to come right across then we'll go all the way back and basically what we'll do after that is we'll then start painting it all with a texture of paint that will give it like a ripply finish it hides up a lot of imperfections and it'll, it'll look great at the end uh, well basically we're having a felt overlay felt torturon system over the whole roof surface uh, apart from the end section where Russell's just doing some patch repairs at the moment then we've got a original asphalt roof there you can see all the lumps and bumps in it so that will get a two layer system on top of that which is a, a sanded felt first followed by the, the green mineral torch on on top so uh, basically we've just got to get all this area primed up once we've got that we'll probably go for the overlay on this first with this uh, full mill sanded followed by the cap sheet and then it's just a case of keep going you know get, get around the whole lot cover the whole lot in green and uh, that's it, there's a few areas that are blistered and burned where they'll have to be cut out and patches put in first just to try and get out the air underneath. What you see Russell doing at the moment is basically going to be happening over the whole area. So uh, that's, that's the plan of action. So the weather's with us, so we're just going to try and keep it, <laughs> try and get it done. <laughs> How's 
uh, how's the project going? Yeah, it's going pretty well. It took us, uh, I think this is the third day. We've uh, spent a day, well, a couple of days preparing this roof, getting all the stones off, bagged up, get all the kids up here, shoveling it all up. Then we had the jet washer out for the vast majority of the day yesterday, clearing it all up. And this morning we spent time just drying it off with the gas guns. And uh, hopefully by the end of the day we might have it all primed. Fingers crossed for, for tomorrow. That's the sort of schedule. If we can uh, try and stick to it, we'll be happy. <laughs> You want more tea, do you? I want more of that too. Well, you know where the kettle is. I want more of that too. Do you know where it is? Aww. Oh. Oh. Um, well, I, mean, I originally came here um, from a call that was made to a blog that Charlie had put on about trying to help the kids uh, do up the community centres and so forth. Uh, so why I originally came here, just to survey and have a look and see what works are required. I mean, I generally try to get down here once or twice a week if I can, just to oversee, see how everything, everything is running. I keep in contact with Ed and Clive regularly. Um, keep in touch with the guys. The guys are just teaching the guys on the job how to go across things and hopefully that they're going to learn it and be able to upkeep the community centre themselves then in the future with what we would teach them today. Obviously some special things like the roof works and so forth uh, they won't be able to do but uh, I, I imagine that roof should, should have a good 15 to 20 year lifespan on it once we're completed anyway. Um, so in generally I should imagine the kids should be able to hopefully upkeep to a reasonable standard themselves the community centres after we leave. You ain't getting proof of me just standing about are you? Right, basically where we are with this place, we've coated these walls red, that's all done, we've got to give that one over there one more coat, we are now blotting out the green and the grey, which we're then going to put a cream colour on, it was originally all, all going to be red, but we've gone for a bit of a contrast because it's, we, well, we, it was felt that it was too red, too red. We've, we've had quite a few ups and downs with, with everything, it's, it's a, uh, we've been sort of catch 22 situation where we've had a lot of kids but not a lot of things to get on with or vice versa, we haven't had a lot of kids but a lot of things to get on with. The problem is what we've got is there's not enough paint to get on with completion. So basically what we've got is we can do a bit, bit, bit here and a bit there, but not a lot of everything else. There's plenty of prepping to do, uh, which as you can see we've started doing that now. Uh, we've got guys putting the coat on, on the woodwork, they're putting coats on the doors. Obviously the next step, like I say, is to finish that red off. Paint these two end walls, then we're going to be on basically the top coat of the wood. Then that will be here, finished. Midway through the project, the trainees were given a boost by the government minister with a major interest in the future career prospects of young people. I think the thing that's impressive about this project is it does two things. The first is it clearly makes a, a big difference to the local community. Refurbishing something that's clearly been a heart of the local community for a long time needs love and attention. It's a real example of the big society in action of a major company doing the right thing. 
but also it is really clearly helping to develop the skills of young people, giving them a sense of the workplace for the first time, some of the skills they might deploy in jobs in years to come, uh, and some of them will undoubtedly go through work experience placements and apprenticeships and build a career in this area. So for both those reasons it's a really exciting project and it's great to see a company like Pimlico Plumbers doing the right thing in two very different but very important ways. Yeah, I mean, uh, we've obviously started the job now and it all seems to be going well. All the youngsters are getting very involved and, um, you know, this is what it's about, you know, trying to put something back into the community. Um, everybody's a winner here. You know, we, we've got air chaps here doing a bit of mentoring. We've got the, uh, all the, the youngsters here getting involved. They all seem to be enjoying it and, uh, you know, it's turning out a lot better than what we was expecting. And, um, you know, the way it's going at the moment, I feel that, uh, you know, I just think everyone's going to be a winner here on, on this project. You know, this is what it's about, trying to put something back into the community. And, you know, the main thing, hopefully, it gives these youngsters an idea of what they want to get involved in, whether it be painting, building, carpentry. You know, it's a great opportunity. And uh, I'm just very pleased that everybody seems to be getting involved. And uh, it looks like we're all drinking out the same teapot here. Ah, oh, it's week three, Monday morning. As you can see in here, what we're doing at the moment, because we can't get in there or the back room, we're basically rubbed down all the woodwork, uh, ready for basically top coating this, and then this 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 room will be done. We're still waiting for paint so we can basically get coat walls on the back room, the green room. Uh, but like I say at the moment that's basically holding us up. You know really we can't get on with anything really other than sort of woodwork. I'm Rosie Ferguson from London Youth. We're a network of 400 youth clubs across London. I was originally contacted back in December by um, the co-sponsorship agency to see if we'd be interested in being involved in this project. It immediately sounded like a great idea to me um, and I thought of Clive and Mark down in Streatham who uh, were running the youth club here. I gave them a call and they were immediately interested and then we had to get the project off the ground really quickly to be completed within three months. Um, we were able to access funding from the youth volunteering charity V to match the cash and in-kind funding from A4E and Pimlico Plumbers. That enabled us to make sure that the project was really focused on the volunteering aspect for the young people and on their skills development. Since the project started, we've been delighted with the results, mainly because of the renovations to the clubs um, here in Streatham, but also to the opportunities that the young people have had to understand the trades and to learn from the experts at Pimlico Plumbers. We're really excited as a network of 400 youth clubs about how this might be able to go to scale and we can put this in every neighbourhood in youth clubs across London. What's Charlie going to think that more taste? That's all the South Downs, isn't it, Cliff? See you later.
From a WIPT point of view, um, we, uh, we're always looking for opportunities to get involved in local community projects um, in the communities where we, we operate as a business and obviously therefore where our, where our customers live. Um, but this was really great because it was actually being involved in the local community in a way that we can that really fitted with the brand. I think great like partnerships are when everybody's bringing their kind of core skills and uh, expertise to a project, and these kind of sort of large scale renovations are exactly the kind of the kind of projects that the uh, product range is suited to. So we delighted to be able to supply the products. Um, but thirdly, it was also. Um, Getting, sort of engaging the tradesmen. I mean, they're a really key customer group for us. We get to know a lot of the tradesmen in our local stores, and um, they were really excited about being able to get involved and share their skills and expertise. Um, the tradesmen always really enjoy being able to tell people what to do and show them the way to do it. And um, I think it's just a really great way to sort of get them involved in the community and um, be able to make a difference. <laughs>DIY is significant for a number of really important issues. Um, on one level, it's about young people volunteering to benefit their communities. Uh, on the next, it's about encouraging and enabling young people to learn a new trade skill and to gain a vocational accreditation that can really take them further. Um, and then lastly, it's about directly benefiting youth clubs that are in need of essential uh, building repairs to allow them to stay open. Um, and, and on top of that, we've got this really powerful mixture of organisations, uh, local businesses, government, charities, all working together to help address some really key local social and community issues. Um, and, and within that, I think it's a powerful example of how businesses have so much to offer in helping make social action projects of this type happen. Um, so you've got uh, local businesses providing uh, their employees, their customers, their products, their materials, their places, their facilities, and I think all of that makes VIY a really powerful, impactful project. So this is uh, the Wellfield Centre, um, we're going to have loads of uh, projects uh, work going on here as part of the DIY project, um, there's going to be painting going on here in virtually all the rooms in this building, plus the main staircase and, and the uh, sort of circulation areas of the building and this reception area. It's going to be generally you know, a, a facelift of this building as well, we have other groups use it during the week. Obviously it would be a benefit to them, uh, you know, make it look nice from, from the inside, because the outside is very nice. So, uh, you know, get, it, get the inside done. Right, week five of the uh, Stratham project. We're now at Wellfield, we've been here for a couple of days. We would have liked to have been here sort of really, probably a week and a half, two weeks ago. Uh, Really, there's a lot more we wanted to do here, but because of the time, we've been limited to getting basically the whole way uh, top to bottom, including corridors. Uh, we will at some stage be doing the toilet, the gents' toilet, there's repairs to go on in there. Uh, basically, all we're doing at the moment is the ceilings in this hallway have been done, we've prepped up some of the walls and we've got the lads and the ladies down there basically putting the first coat on the wall.
So we're absolutely delighted at A3 that we've been able to support uh, the local community in this way. So working in partnership with Wix and Pimlico Plumbers to do something that is very big society-esque um, means that we've been able to deliver on our purpose which is around supporting young, disadvantaged young people locally. As we do a lot of vocational training within our centre, the opportunity for them to take what they've learned in our centre and apply into a real life setting, as well as adding value to the community and the huge sense of achievement that they get as a result, just supports everything that we're about. And like I said, we're absolutely de delighted to be working with two other great organisations to deliver this piece of work and look forward to many other projects of its type as we move forward. plumbers are the best of what they do and all the rest. <laughs> no, I want to do apprenticeship from Peyton Dockery. I want to do it in general construction. Yeah, same, like, just a bit of everything, innit? Like. It's a big change compared to what it did look like. I thought it'd never get done. Well, we've got a, a, a nicer looking youth club. Yeah, at the start of the project, I was positive. I wasn't sure if I was going to get involved. Most of our lot are school and college, so we've meant them coming down after school and after college and just doing a few hours. Uh, to my surprise, the project's been running four or five weeks now, and every night at least four or five of them have turned up after school, usually more, usually about 10 to 12. In club, they all knew each other, but there was little clicky groups. Now they've bonded as a whole group, the whole team, all the ones that come down there have all got a lot closer. Our figures at the club have gone up. They're all getting together at the project, doing the work and painting, uh, talking and meeting up after at the actual sessions, so that's great. Some of the young people that have come from the college have also become members of the club. They come down on a Thursday and Friday evening, so we've gained membership that way as well. Uh, one of the group went and talked on the radio. Again, she wasn't very confident normally at speaking, but she's she done a great job, and she realised that. She said, now I feel more confident in the future that I can do it again. So for me the whole experience has been great, Pimlico Co Plums have been great. The building looks fantastic, especially the one at Conyers where most of the work's been taking place. It's a great way for us to celebrate our 50th anniversary this year. We're going to have a lot of people coming down. We're going to be advertising it as our 50th and holding some sort of special events in a couple of days. So now we can invite people down and be proud of the building rather than... It was a bit disappointing before, the place was a bit shabby. It's all been redone, it's all looking good. So. We look forward to our summer fun days now. As the project drew to a close, the trainees were joined by dignitaries, members of the local community and the winner of TV's The Apprentice, Tim Campbell, to celebrate their achievements. <laughs>